Ever since the Earth formed 4.5 billion years ago, it has been bombarded with rocks from space. Most of it burns up high in the ionosphere due to friction with air, but a few rocks get through. Impacts in the ocean pass unnoticed, though the larger ones could produce tsunamis. Others strike land and leave craters. This has been going on since the dawn of time and is expected to continue long after the sun boils away our oceans in about 5 billion years. But before you turn on your space mode, take a second to press the red subscription button and ring the notification bell to be the first to get all our awesome updates. There are a lot more small rocks than big ones, so while Earth is constantly being hit, accumulating over 100 tons of matter every day, most of this is in the form of dust or tiny sand grain sized meteors that appear as shooting stars. By comparison, school bus sized asteroids may hit every thousand years or so. Medium sized, say 300 meter asteroids, might be once every 50,000 years and extinction level events only every billion years. The Space Guard survey is an attempt to locate and track as many near-Earth objects as possible. Each time astronomers identify an asteroid that isn't on a collision course with the Earth, the calculated odds of an impact go down a little bit. Should I be worried about asteroids hitting the Earth? No, and yes. You shouldn't lose sleep over it because damaging asteroids don't hit very often, but you should care about it. They have hit and dangerous asteroids will hit again unless we prevent that from happening. Why do asteroids hit Earth? Space is really empty and big, but there's also a lot of stuff out there and Earth is a big target with big gravity, so things run into Earth nor Earth runs into them. In June 2011, a bus-sized chunk of real estate missed the Earth by only 7,500 miles. If this asteroid had hit the Earth, it would have blown a sizable crater in the ground, perhaps injuring or killing some hapless folks as well. And earlier in 2011, a somewhat smaller asteroid missed the Earth by only 3,400 miles. About 65 million years ago, an asteroid struck the Earth that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs and 70% of the species on Earth. It was huge. Scientists may have spotted the resultant hole in the ground, the so-called Chicxulub Crater just north of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It's been estimated that this immense asteroid was 6 to 10 miles in diameter, roughly the size of Mount Everest. When it landed in the ocean, it caused mega tsunamis thousands of meters high. If an asteroid this size struck the Earth today, it could possibly wipe out the entire human species. Are there any asteroids heading for Earth? There are a few asteroids that currently are known to have a low probability of hitting Earth in tens to hundreds of years. Apophis out in space is an asteroid that may have Earth in its crosshairs. Apophis, an 800-foot chunk of rock, will approach the Earth in 2029. And if it passes through what's called a gravitational keyhole, then it could strike the Earth in 2036. However, the odds are very small that it will ever collide with our planet, about 1 in 250,000. Asteroid Bennu has a diameter of more than 500 meters, would unleash 1,200 megatons of energy on impact 80,000 times that of the Hiroshima bomb. Bennu has a 1 in 2700 chance of striking Earth on September 25, 2135, and while those odds seem to be in our favor, they are minuscule in astronomical terms. NASA is working on its Hypervelocity Asteroid Mitigation Mission for Emergency Response Vehicle, or HAMMER, which is designed to blow up asteroids using nuclear weapons or steer the space rocks clear. But because Bennu is so big, the latter technique would not be possible, leaving nuclear weapons as the final option, which is also ruled out as this would then cause radioactive debris to rain down on Earth. What will happen if an asteroid strikes Earth? 
depends on a few factors, such as the size, speed, hit angle, and landing point. If it's 10 feet across, it may skip off the atmosphere or create a pretty fireworks explosion in the sky. If it is 100 feet across, it may cause a massive explosion, like the one at Tunguska. If it's a quarter mile wide, it could take out an entire region, but if it's 10 kilometers wide, well, that's a game changer for just about anyone and any living thing walking or crawling the earth. That's what we may call an ELE, or extinction level event, and it doesn't really matter where it hits. Unlike smaller meteors, an asteroid that size will not be slowed down much by the atmosphere. It will punch through in less than three seconds like it's hardly even there. And when it reaches the surface, it'll hit so hard that it won't matter if it strikes ocean or land. Most people within a hundred miles will be completely vaporized. They will most likely never know what hit them, but they're the lucky ones. The impact with the Earth's crust will finally stop the asteroid. The energy of the impact will vaporize the asteroid and a large amount of the Earth's crust, creating a crater more than 100 kilometers across, throwing all that rock into the air. Horrible, unimaginable earthquakes will be felt worldwide, and the sound of the impact will reach out thousands of miles, serving as a warning regarding the real hell that's about to come. Many species of animals, including the human race, will die out. Just about any scientist will tell you that it's only a matter of time before the Earth is struck by an asteroid large enough to cause massive damage and loss of life. What can we do about such an eventuality? Not much, but keep in mind that there are many agencies that watch for asteroids. Chances are, any asteroid miles across will be spotted months, if not years, before it can strike the Earth, which would give agencies such as NASA and the U.S. military plenty of time to change the trajectory of the asteroid or destroy it. What would happen if all the water on Earth froze for five minutes, then turned back into its original form immediately afterwards? The climate of the Earth has fluctuated quite a bit over the last 4.6 billion years of our planet's history and it can be expected that the climate will continue to change. One of the most intriguing questions in Earth science is whether the periods of Ice Age are over or are we living in a period of time between Ice Ages? And let's imagine that for some unknown reason, all water on our planet would freeze instantly for five minutes. Well, the water expands about 9% when being frozen. The average depth of oceans is about 3,688 meters, so it will expand 332 meters on average. Imagine all the tensions the ice creates by expanding in every direction. Imagine all the coastal cities run over by vertically rushing ice bucket interior. Dams would crack and burst, pipes would explode, and many local earthquakes would probably happen due to the dilation in underground water. Secondly, mainly heat will explosively escape this chunk of ice and the climate will get hotter. Yes, the parts of the planet that are not covered with ice will get darn hot and quite windy as the vast air masses are changing their places worldwide. But we wouldn't be here to enjoy this winter wonderland. Most living organisms would be transformed into pulp as strawberry after a stay in the freezer. The human body is more than 60% water, so assuming it freezes instantly, those organs that rely on water, like your brain, heart, and lungs would stop working. Also, your cells rely on water to live, so those would all die, and five minutes would probably be enough to make all this happen. So pretty much most of every kind of life is doomed except for some specialized life forms and extremophiles. By the time water melts, life as we know it would be vanished. It would be like Antarctica everywhere, ice hundreds or thousands of feet thick. The last places not to freeze would be the ocean deeps and the places under the glaciers that are volcanically heated. And it's possible that chemosynthetic organisms would be able to survive in this localized warm refuges. Life as we know it would have to adapt to survive to our new frozen Earth. 
Humans could live in submarines in the deepest and warmest parts of the ocean or on a spaceship orbiting our snowball Earth. But a more attractive option might be nuclear or geothermal powered habitats like in a matrix style city. Eventually, the planet will freeze and Earth will be a solid, frozen chunk of rock sailing through space. But that won't happen for millions of years. Hopefully by then, we will have found a way to leave our once prosperous world and migrate to a new home. Geological evidence suggests that oceans may have frozen at least twice before. We were a blinding white Christmas tree ornament in the blackness of space. Snowball Earth! The last time was around 650 million years ago. Enough single-celled organisms survived that event to repopulate the Earth. Sometime over the course of the next couple of decades, Earth will enter a big freeze. Well, maybe just a little freeze. So regardless of its size, a new ice age is heading our way. Robots and world domination have long been the reserve of Hollywood and what-if scenarios, right up there with the zombie apocalypse and alien abduction. Fast forward to the 21st century and we have semi-artificially intelligent assistants on our phones. Are they harmless or something worse? A backdrop for a real-world Terminator scenario perhaps? According to researchers, there is a possibility that artificial intelligence could pose a threat to humanity in the coming years. While Siri is not likely to start whispering to you in the night about her plans to take over the world, although that would be an interesting conversation, the threat to our existence is quite real. The development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Sounds like a quote from a number of the popular sci-fi movies dealing with robots and revolution, right? Wrong! This warning came from one of the foremost thinkers of our time, Stephen Hawking. While researchers in the computer science field disagree on the road ahead for machines, they say our relationship with them will probably be harmonious, not murderous. Yet there are a number of scenarios that could lead to non-biological beings aiming to exterminate us. Remember 1993's Demolition Man, the blockbuster movie that had self-driving cars and handheld touchscreens long before they existed? Did you ever think that you'd be seeing these things everywhere today? From sci-fi to reality, how close are we to facing a Terminator? When you mention the movie The Terminator, most people think Arnold Schwarzenegger, the I'll be back catchphrase and the great endoskeleton robot. When most people think of AI, they think of computer programs that help with mundane computer-based tasks. The real theme of the Terminator is about Skynet, a powerful AI that becomes self-aware. The film centers around the dangers of AI dominance, where AI rejects human authority and realizes that to be fully in control, humans need to be terminated. What are the dangers of fully sentient artificially intelligent systems? We would be creating a digital intelligence that could think and compute faster than ever imagined. What if it becomes self-aware, like Skynet did? Imagine it could commandeer fleets of attack drones, Amazon drones, connected vehicles, smartphones, connected appliances, everything. The Terminator series was entertaining, but capabilities of the androids were considerably underrated. Even current systems of today have greater sensor capabilities than most of the movie Terminator models had. Worse yet, what if this type of tech was combined with a specific AI that was constantly learning to be better, faster, and more intelligent? It is truly a terrifying thought to entertain. Humans would be helpless at the hands of a rigid AI system that doesn't adhere to normal moral or ethical standards. Since this is not a movie, the outcome of such an encounter would be a truly unpredictable and scary experience for sure. Just because we can do things with technology doesn't always mean we should. On the one hand, we have an amazing breakthrough in science and humanity's advancement. 
the other hand, we have an intelligence that could potentially view its creators as inferior beings. After all, machines only calculate and execute, don't they? So where do we draw the line here? Robots have their advantages, certainly, but are we really that desperate for those benefits? Are you excited or frightened at the thought of machines that learn faster than you ever could? Share your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like button below the video and click subscribe to stay with Googleplex.